Welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and you have clicked on for the Halloween Witch Gnome Crochet Along. What this is going to be is a series of tutorials where I show you how to crochet your very own Halloween Witch Gnome. At the beginning of every part of this crochet along, I will let you know what you need for that part. But just to give you a little gist, you're going to want some worsted weight yarn, a crochet hook, some scissors, some polyfill, and a stitch marker. For a worsted weight yarn, I recommend using a 3.5 or a 4 millimeter hook just to keep those stitches nice and tight and to keep your polyfill from showing through. You're more than welcome to do this crochet tutorial in any size yarn that you would like and any hook size that you would like. Uh, just customize the hook size to be a little bit smaller than the recommended on the ball band so that you can get some nice tight stitches. And without further ado, let's hop into part three where we will be finishing off our gnome doing the hat and hair and assembly process. To make my hat, I am going to be doing two different colors. I'm going to be using this Caron Simply Soft Party, which is this sparkly color, and it is in Dark Sage Sparkle. And then I'm also going to be using just this black I Love This yarn. These are both worsted weight yarns, and I'm going to do striping for my hat, but you are welcome to do one solid color or stripe as many colors as you would like to. But I will show you how to do the striping just in case you would like to. To begin, go ahead and grab whatever color you would like to start with. Grab the hook size that you are using for this project. I'm going to be using a 3.5 millimeter with my worsted weight yarn. And go ahead and grab yourself a stitch marker. Any type will do. Um, and you know, if you prefer not to use a stitch marker, then you can just keep count. To begin, we are going to start off with a magic circle. So I will show you how to make this magic circle, but if you need a slowed down version of how to do it, I do have a magic circle tutorial and I will link it in the description box below this video in case you need to refer to it. But you're just gonna take the tail of your yarn, you're gonna take these two fingers, put them together, lay this yarn over your fingers and secure it with your thumb. Then you're gonna wrap around these two fingers and you're gonna cross over the yarn that you already have wrapped. Then you're going to take your hook and you're going to go under this first loop. You're going to grab the second loop and pull it forward and turn. And then you're just going to yarn over your hook and pull through. And that's how you make your magic circle. Then I just grab my tail out of my magic circle and pull it forward and it will look like this. So that is the first step and then we are just going to be placing six single crochets into our magic circle. So to do that we're going to work over the side of our circle and over the side of the tail. And then we're just going to place six single crochets per usual. Just like normal single crochets, you're just working over both of those. So there's three, four, five, and six. Now you're just going to pull on this um, tail a little bit. Don't pull super tightly just yet, but give it a little cinch. And then we are going to single crochet into that first single crochet. Let's so go ahead and put your hook through and place a single crochet. And then at this point, you can go ahead and tighten up that circle. And we just wait to do that so that we don't lose that first stitch. It can be a little difficult to work into if you tighten your circle up all the way. So go ahead and place your stitch marker into that first stitch. And we are just going to single crochet around for four rounds. So you're going to single crochet into each of those six single crochets. There's three, four, five, and six. And that's one round. You're going to do four rounds. As you go, this is going to start to cup up. Make sure that you direct it so that this magic circle tail is on the inside. 
So we're going to want to kind of flip this and direct our work this way. You can just kind of push your fingertip into it. That way the outside of your stitches is on the outside. If you want, you can take the stitch marker out after each round and replace it and just keep count. Or if you'd like to, you can leave it here and then you can just count your rows up from the stitch marker to keep track. It's up to you how you prefer to do that. So I'm just going to place that single crochet for the second round. And then I am going to single crochet all the way around. And we're not doing any increases or anything, so it will be a little tight here for these stitches, but it's just to get the point of our hat going. And there's three. Four. Five. And six. All right. So just ignore your magic circle tail for now and just kind of keep moving it out of your way as you go and go ahead and do two more rounds and then meet me back for the next step. And once you've got your rounds done, we can go ahead and tuck in this magic circle tail. So we're just gonna push it into the tip of our hat. I'm gonna use my polyfill uh, stuffing stick that comes with the polyfill and I'm just gonna use that to stick this down in here. And if you'd like to, you can cut it so that it's shorter or you can just stick the whole thing down in there like that. All right, and now we are going to do a little bit of increasing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place a single crochet into that first stitch. And then if you'd like to, you can go ahead and place your stitch marker. We are gonna do a increase for the next round. So we're gonna do a single crochet that we just did or not next round, sorry, next stitch. And we're gonna do an increase in this stitch. Okay? We're gonna repeat that all the way around. So we're just gonna do that three times in total. Single crochet. And then an increase. And remember, an increase is when you place two stitches into one stitch. So we're putting two single crochets into the same stitch. All right, and then we're gonna do one more set of a single crochet. And then two single crochets into the next stitch. For this final stitch, uh, we are going to begin to do our single crochet, but instead of yarning over here at the end and pulling through to finish our single crochet, if you would like to do any striping, this is a good time to go ahead and attach on in your new color. So once more, let me just show you that. I've got my one single crochet in the final stitch, but remember this final stitch is actually an increase. So I'm going to go through, pull up a loop, but then instead of yarning over and pulling through to finish my single crochet, I am going to yarn over in my new color. So I am gonna be taking my black, and I've got my yarn tail right here. I'm literally just gonna place it over my hook and then I'm gonna pull through in this new color to finish my single crochet. And what that does is it attaches us on in the new color um, for the next round of stitches and it just finishes it off all nicely. Okay, so then what I'm going to do before moving on is I'm gonna take my yarn tail and my working yarn for the green that I'm using and I'm gonna tie those together just to give me a nice little secure spot. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is how I like to do my color change. And you are welcome to do your color changes any way that you want, or not at all if you want to just do a solid color. Or you could even use a variegated yarn. All right, so I went ahead and did that. And then I'm going to take that polyfill stick again. And I am going to push down this little tail into the tip of my hat. 
And if you don't have enough room to do that yet, that's totally fine. Just ignore your tail until you have enough room to do that. And then you can do it. All right, so now that we are attached on in our new color, we are going to just ignore the first color's uh, um, strand, just sit it to the side, and we'll do our next round in our new color. We are just gonna do four rounds of single crochets again, just like we did after the um, initial stitches that we did. So now that we've increased a little bit, we'll just do single crochets all the way around, and I'm gonna be doing it in my new color. Like I said, you do not have to color change if you don't want to. Uh, you can just stay with the same color, but in case you would like to do striping, I thought I would show you how. Make sure my camera is focused. So I'm just gonna single crochet all the way around. You can do your striping in any thickness that you want. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna switch back and forth um, with your colors when you get back to that first stitch. Um, you know how I just showed you how to do it? You'll just do the same thing. Um, but you won't have to tie on and do your knot every time because you're already attached. So I'll show you what I'm talking about as I get back to this first stitch. Okay, so I'm coming up on my final stitch and I can tell because it is the final stitch that looks green on the top. And I'm gonna go through. I'm going to pull up a loop in this color but then, just like before, I'm going to yarn over in my other color and then pull through. And that switches me back to my other color. And then I just put the first, uh, or the color I was just using, set it to the side. And continue around. So we're doing another round of single crochet since we want to do four in total. And now I'm just doing it in my green. And it's that easy. Uh, if you're going to be doing frequent color changes, you can just carry your yarn up as you go. So like I said, you can change colors every round. You can change colors every other round. You can change colors as much as you'd like to. If you're going to be um, making big gaps in between changing colors, you may want to tie off and then retie on with your color when you do decide to do um, a color change. And you would just do it the same way that I showed you how to do it the first time. And you can just tie on with any new colors. So I'm up to this last stitch again. Yarn over, pull up a loop. And then I am going to switch back to this color. And then I'm gonna pull that through. And you are going to have a little bit of a color jog spot right here. Um, and that for me, I'm just going to make the back of my work. So that will be the back of my gnome. And I just always try to put my color changes on the back of my gnome. All right, so we're just gonna do two more rounds of single crochet. I'm not even using my stitch marker at this moment because I can easily see where the beginning of my round is when I get to my color change. Um, but you are welcome to use your stitch marker if you would like to. And you do not have to stripe. But now that I've explained to you how to stripe, uh, I won't you know, keep explaining it over and over. You just will know when you want to do your color change that you are going to end that round by doing your color change in the way that I've shown you. And we are just gonna do a total of four rounds of single crochet. So we started out by doing six single crochets. So we had a row count of six, or a uh, stitch count of six. Then we did single crochet increase, and we did that three times, so all the way around. And that put us up to nine. We just did four more rounds of single crochets, which were nine single crochets. And now we are going to be doing two single crochets and an increase. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around, so three times in total and that's gonna put us to 12. So in case you are wanting the stitch counts, that is what we are at. So we're gonna go ahead and do a single crochet, a single crochet, 
and then an increase. And we are going to do that three times in total. So once again, single crochet, single crochet, and an increase. And then we're going to do that one more time. And like I said, this is going to give us a stitch count of 12 at the end of the round. And then I'm ending on this increase here. All right. And then after you do that, we are just going to single crochet for four rounds. So just repeating that same trend that we have been doing. So single crochet all the way around from the first stitch to the last stitch four times and then meet me back. All right, and as you've made your way back around there, you are going to have 12 stitches and we are going to be doing a single crochet into the first stitch of the next round. So this is round 16, and we are going to be doing a repeat of a single crochet and then an increase in each stitch. So we're gonna be doing that a total of six times. That's what'll get us all the way around. So we're gonna do single crochet and an increase. All right, and you're just going to continue to repeat that until you get back to the beginning of the round. Single crochet in an increase. And we are starting this round with 12 stitches and we will be ending it with 18. For the next two rounds, we are just going to single crochet all the way around. And now that you have finished round 18, you should be having 18 stitches around and looking a little something like this. Uh, now that I've given you a lot of examples of how we're doing this part, I'm going to start to speed it up a little bit. But remember, you can always pause, work on a part, and then hit play again. And if you need help with how to do this again, just rewind and watch the first uh, 18 rounds where I kind of walked you through and really showed you exactly what we were doing. But I think at this point you get the gist of what we're doing and I can speed it up just a little bit for you. So for the next step we are going to be doing two single crochets and then an increase and that is going to be our repeat all the way around. You're going to do that six times and you are going to have a total of 24 stitches when you get back at the end of the round. And once you finish round 19, it should look a little something like this, and you should have 24 stitches. We are just going to do 24 single crochets around for round 20. Round 20 should look a little something like this when you finish it. And then for round 21, you're just going to do three single crochets and then an increase. And when you do that around six times, you will have 30 stitches and it will look like this. For round 22, you just want to single crochet all the way around. You will still have 30 stitches and for round 23, you're going to single crochet four and increase. After doing that six times, it'll look a little something like this and you will have 36 stitches. So for round 24, you are just going to single crochet around in all 36 stitches. And when you get back, it will look like this. For round 25, you're just going to single crochet five and then increase. And after you've done that six times, it'll get you back to your stitch marker and you will have 42 stitches. For round 26, go ahead and single crochet in every stitch. So you'll still have 42 stitches at the end of round 26. And it will look like this. For round 27, you're just going to go ahead and single crochet six and increase. And after doing that six times, you will have 48 stitches around. For round 28, you're just going to go ahead and single crochet in every stitch. So you'll still have 48 stitches at the end of the round. 
and it will be looking like this. And for round 29, you're just going to single crochet seven and increase. That's gonna be your repeat for the round. And at the end of the round, you will have 54 stitches. For round 30, you're just gonna single crochet in every stitch around, and you're gonna do the same thing for round 31 and 32. All right, and you should be looking a little something like this. Uh, we are now to round 33. Um, at the end of round 32, you should have 54 single crochets. So here's what we're looking like, and we are getting pretty close to being done with our hat, and I just wanted to come back and show you the next step. Um, that way it's a little bit different, so I just want to make sure that you know how to do it. All right, so for this one, we are going to be doing front loop only single crochets. Now, I did show you in another part of the tutorial where the front loop was, so I'm not going to take too long on it, but I just want to make sure that you remember that it is this loop closest to you. All right, so we're going to be doing front loop only single crochets for eight single crochets, and then we're going to be doing a front loop only increase. So go ahead and do that. Um, you're going to repeat that all the way around, just doing eight single crochets in the front loop only, and then an increase in the front loop only, and repeating that so you get back around. And that is how you do round 33. For round 34, you're just going to single crochet in every stitch around, so you will have 60 stitches, and you will have 60 stitches at the end. Round 35 is going to be single crochet 9 and then increase, and you're going to repeat that around 6 times, and you will have 66 stitches. And after that, go ahead and do round 36, where you will single crochet 5 and do an increase, and you're going to repeat that 11 times, and you will have 77 stitches. Okay, and here's what it looks like. I have it flattened out, so it looks a little wider than it's been looking. But here is what we should be looking like now that you have finished round 36. And I did do um, the last few rounds in just black. So it's up to you if you're striping if you want to do that. But since I started the first few rounds in just green, I thought I would do just black. All right, so now that we have finished our hat, we are going to go ahead and tie off. So you can go ahead and slip stitch over to that first stitch. Get yourself a length of yarn. Um, if you're planning on sewing your hat on with your yarn, make sure you get yourself a really good length of yarn. And then go ahead and cut off and pull up on your hook. All right, and that's what your hat should be looking like. Now what we're gonna wanna do when we go to attach our hat is we'll figure out where we want our hat to be attached at and we will weave this tail up to where we're gonna be sewing. So like, let's say that you wanna sew on this round, then you'll weave up a couple of rounds um, and bring your uh, yarn up out there and then you can work your way around sewing um, to attach your hat. Okay, so go ahead and grab your gnome. You're gonna want that for working on your braids as well because we are going to want to get an idea for how long we want our hair to be. Now keep in mind you're going to be braiding it so it will get a little bit shorter, but basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is set your gnome up with your hat and grab your nose. And this is going to be how you get an idea for how you want, how long you want your hair to be. So put your nose on and just kind of stick it where you think you'll want it. Pull your hat down to where you think you'll want that. And I'm going to have to kind of sit it up to make sure that I have mine how I want it. And your hat should be able to kind of hold the nose in place for you while you figure it out. Okay, so I think I'm gonna want my nose about right there. What I recommend doing is grabbing um, something that you can skewer the nose on with. So I'm going to grab a um, darning needle that I have, just one of these plastic ones, 
and I'm going to like kind of skewer the nose um, to the body. It'll give me a good frame of reference of where I'm going to want my hair. So you can kind of just skewer the nose to the body like that and it'll give you an idea. Then I can take the hat off and I still have an idea of where I want my hair to go because I want my hair to go on either side of the nose. Also, if you notice that when you do that, your nose is a little off center, you know, just to make sure that you figure uh, how you want it and then you'll be able to get an idea for how long you want your hair to be. So what we're gonna do is the first thing we're gonna do is cut a length that is gonna be how we anchor on to our gnome. So you're gonna want to leave yourself a long tail on one end. So you've got your tail of yarn. You're gonna wanna leave yourself a good like six inches. And then you're going to measure how long you want it to be going from like here to here with this kind of uh, going across like this. We're gonna work the hair over this string and it's gonna hang down. Okay, so you're gonna want like that long and then you're gonna to wanna to leave yourself another like couple five or six inches. So that should be a good length. And go ahead and cut that. And then you've got the length that you're going to want for attaching your hair. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our yarn and we're going to measure from where the string is kind of laying down to the bottom of the dress. And we're going to add a couple of extra inches. So from here to the to here, and then I'm adding about two inches. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and move this out of the way so you guys can see a little bit better. This is how long that length was for me from the bottom of the dress up to the uh, string and then adding about two inches. Then what I'm go going to do is I'm going to take my yarn and wrap it so that I go all the way down to the end. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Wrap it until I go all the way down to this end turn, just pulling it all the way down to the end, and I'm just adding more and more strands of yarn that are going to be all the same length. And you're just going to do this until you get a pretty good amount, a thickness that you think will be good for a braid, um, and then double it so that you have enough for two braids. So this is really up to personal preference of how thick you want your braids to be. Just like this. So keep going on that until you get to the thickness that you want your braids to be. Once you've got your lengths of yarn that are all kind of wrapped, what we're going to do is straighten it out the best that you can and then grab your scissors and we are just going to cut across one end. What we're going to want to do is just cut across the end here just like so. And this will make it so that you have your lengths of yarn twice as long as you need them to be because you have the one end that's cut and the one end that's not. So it'll be like this. The reason that we're doing it like that is because now we can just wrap them right over our string that we're attaching onto the head with. So all you'll do is we can go ahead and take this off of here is you'll take half of them and put them over for one braid and half of them and put them over for the other braid. So you can take clumps and do this in like sections or do it one by one if you want to make sure that they're even. Um, either way works. 
But basically, you're just going to do it so that all of your pieces of hair are um, laying about half and half, like halfway down the line um, across this so that we can fold them over it and that'll anchor them on really easily. Just like this. And like I said, you don't have to go one by one unless you want to. Um, you're free to pick up just chunks of it and do it that way. Um, but go ahead and do that and then meet me back and I will show you what to do next. All right, and once you've got your hair all separated out into its little piles, or your yarn, I guess it's not actually hair yet, but we're pretending it is, you're just going to take your string, that is going to be how you attach it to your head, and lift up on it, and fold it over. And now your hair is laying uh, kind of wrapped around it, and all we're going to do is turn these into braids. So you're going to want to kind of make sure that your hair is um, half and half on either side of this uh, base string that we're doing. That way when you go to braid it, you don't have like really different lengths. So I'm kind of stretching it out and stretching this out so that I know that they're about the same. That looks about the same. And don't worry about the ends being all perfect. Um, after we make the braids, we can trim these if we want to and just kind of make the bottom of them look how you want it to look. So before I get going on here, I am going to go ahead and cut myself a length of that black yarn that I'm gonna use as a hair tie. And you can make this as long as you want because you can always trim it after. And then I am just going to braid this together. So I'm going to take the whole chunk. And I'm going to kind of anchor my hands on either side of this to hold it still. Move my witch gnome out of the way over there. And then I am just going to begin to braid. So when I have this anchored, I can pull tightly on this while I'm working on my braid. And if you don't know how to braid, I will kind of try to show you. But you divide into three chunks. And you can always not do a braid if you'd rather not. But um, you do three chunks. So one, two, and three. And then you're going to take them and you're going to take this one that's in your right hand and kind of cross it under this other one. Grab it, pull over, and take the one that's in your left, grab it and pull it over. And then this one that's in the center, grab it and pull it over. And you're just going to repeat that all the way down. I know that that's probably not the best braid tutorial ever, um, but I don't really know how to explain how to braid. <laughs> so just repeat that sequence over and over. Try to keep your hands anchored on here if you can. It'll help to uh, let you pull on it a little bit. And we're just going to keep going and working our way down. Alternatively, you could um, wait to do the braid until it's attached to the head, actually, if you want to. Now that I've got a decent amount of braid, I went ahead and let go of my cord that I was anchoring with, and I'm just holding on to the braid as I braid. Like I said, I know this isn't the best like braiding tutorial, but... I'm sure that there are probably tutorials on YouTube if you would like to learn how to braid and you don't know already. Um, but there we go. All right. And then once you've got that braided, very lovely, totally not the sloppiest braid in the universe. 
Um, you can go ahead and take your length that you're using for your tie, lay it down. I'm going to kind of push down on this orange part to keep it from unbraiding while I make a little knot. So I'm holding it down with my fingers and I'm making the knot with my other fingers. And then once you've got that pulled tightly, you can let go of the braid if you need to and just make some knots. I'm going to make three knots just to make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to tie a little bow. All right, and uh, keep in mind when you're doing this that it doesn't matter if this moves. It, this uh, braid can actually slide along this cord and be repositioned. So don't worry about if it moves down the cord, um, but go ahead and do the same thing for your other one and meet me back and I'll show you how to attach it to the head. All right, and now that you have got your little braids done, these are able to be repositioned on the uh, string. So you can slide them around in whatever which way you want to, um, especially when we get to the part where we're actually putting them on our gnome. But the first thing that I'm going to do is actually going to be to attach this nose so that um, it is in place exactly where it's going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up the way that I want to. Remember, I'm going to keep my finger here so I know I had left some little... Um, knots on the back so I know that that's the side that I wanted to face this way um, but you can figure out how you want yours to face and then you can either hot glue or sew it on so if you are going to sew it on you probably left yourself a length of yarn to do so and I'm just going to stick this back here for a second and I'm going to grab my bent tip uh, darning needle because this is the type I prefer for attaching things to my amigurumi and I am going to thread my needle. So I'm going to show you how to sew this on. Um, I'm going to take my needle and poke it through here and come out a little bit more on the back side of here so that my yarn tail isn't starting on the side. And I'll just briefly show you um, the gist of how to sew this on because um, beyond that, you know, you can choose whether you want to sew it on or whether you want to um, hot glue it on. There's really no like special way of doing this. I just stick my needle in and attach it, but I will show you just, you know, in case you want to know. Um, I want my little wart to be down at the bottom, so I'm going to attach it that way. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to turn this to the side so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go back through the back of the nose, just through some of those stitches back there. And I'm going to pull on this again. And basically, I'm just going to work my way around a little bit. I'm going to pop out over on this side a little. Make sure I don't go over too far. So now I'm going through the body. And then I'm going to turn it to the other side over here and go through some of these stitches. And I don't like my nose to be attached um, a whole lot. I like it to basically just be attached in the back. So I'm just going to basically repeat this uh, several times just to make sure it's nice and secure. So now I'm going through the body again. Popping out over here. I'm basically just going to go in and out um, of my nose and out, out of my body, making sure it's nicely secured. I'm gonna come out at the bottom, bottom end side now.
and then through the body again. Basically just making sure I don't go too far away from my nose when I'm going into the body because I don't want you to see um, this yarn that I'm sewing with poking out, um, you know, not hidden under my nose. But just like that. And now that is nicely secured. I went um, around and sewed it from kind of every side a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the body again and I'm going to come up here at the top. This part up here at the top is going to be hidden by our hat. So you can do anything you want up here to tie off that is something and you will not see this. So that's one of the nice things about uh, making something that has a hat. So I'm just going to kind of sew back and forth up here to make myself kind of like a little knot. Um, to tie off my sewing with. So I'm just kind of going to go back and forth in this area up here and secure my thread, secure my yarn. And the only thing is just to make sure that you don't go um, back in in the exact same spot, like in the exact same stitch that you came out of. All right. Just like that, and I think that that will be good. I'm gonna go under the screen uh, one more time for good measure, and then I'm just going to cut this, and I don't even need to worry about cutting it flush up to it, because like I said, you will not see that. All right, and that is how we get our nose attached. So now that you know how you, where your nose is going to go, you can go ahead and take this string that we had made with our hair on it and you can work on figuring out the placement for that. So you can use your thumbs to kind of push the hairs closer together, figure out, you know, where you want them placed in relation to the nose. So I want mine to be pretty close to the nose. Like that. And then we're going to take our needle again and thread one end of our, uh, string that we're using to attach to the head. So the one that we worked our braids over. Get that on there and make sure you've got, you know, this lined up how you want it. And then you're just going to go through and I'm going to go all the way through and pop out over here where I want my um, other one to attach. Just like so. And make sure you like leave enough slack here so that this goes the way that you want it to. And then you can just tie these in a knot because this will be hidden under the hat. So this is a relatively no sew, low sew uh, kind of way to attach the hair. And I'm just going to tie a few knots. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then boom, you've got your little uh, witchy nose and your little witchy braids attached. And you can either just trim these right here, uh, or if you would rather, you can weave them up through the body and pull them out up here. That is totally up to you um, and how you want to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and trim them right here. I triple knotted this, so I'm not worried about the knot coming out. But like I said, that is totally up to you. Okay? And so you've got your nose and your hair attached. And the final thing that we need to attach for our witch is this hat. So you can either hot glue your hat on or you can sew it on. And it's going to be much the same that I uh, showed you with the nose. You are just going to go around and attach it wherever you want it to attach at. So um, you can sew it onto the nose. I like to connect the hat to the nose a little bit to uh, keep it kind of in place of where I want it. You can sew it to the tops of the arms, around the top of the body, just wherever you want to um, attach it at. Or you can do the same thing with hot glue. 
So that is totally up to you how you want to do that. And like I said to you guys before, I am planning on going up a little bit into my hat with my yarn before attaching because I don't want to attach the very brim of the hat to the to the witch. I want this part to be able to stick out. So I am going to attach it in a way that it attaches several rounds up to my witch. That way, when I put it on, you'll still get this kind of fluffed out, you know, brim. You want the brim to be able to pop out, in my opinion. So I'm going to go up to not this green one, but this uh, second black one. And to do that in the back here, I'm just going to go inside of my hat. Make sure I'm focused for you guys. There we go. I'm going to go inside of my hat and catch the back of these stitches. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just going to catch the back of the stitches until I've worked my way up to the round that I'm wanting to attach at. And like I said, you can pick any round you want. Um, if you did striping, I would recommend doing it at um, the same color. That way you don't see your sewing. But go ahead and attach your hat on and you will have finished your very own Halloween witch gnome. By the way, as you're attaching the hat, if you would like to stuff it, um, feel free to do that. The way that I would do it is just to do it in increments, uh, sewing the hat a little bit, stuffing a little bit um, until you are almost done sewing the hat on. And then I would just uh, stuff any last stuffing up in there. And make sure that you have your braids positioned how you want them to be uh, as you're sewing around the front. That way, if you um, sew over them, you know, they're already placed how you want them to be. Um, feel free to trim the ends of your hair if you would like to at the bottom. And you have finished your witchy Halloween uh, gnome. So if you would like to make any little accessories for your witch gnome, I actually will be putting out a couple little tutorials um, for some little accessories. So I'm going to be doing a tutorial for this little book. Looks like this. And I'm going to be doing a tutorial for this little cauldron. Um, and these are both very small. That way they can be paired with our witch gnome. And the cauldron, it has little three little legs on it and it does stand. Um, right now I just have some yarn stuffed in it. But I also am going to uh, show you how to either leave it open so you can put things in it. Or if you want it to appear to have um, liquid in it and be able to stuff it with uh, polyfill or with yarn scraps, um, then I will show you how to attach that on and you'll be able to do that as well. So I'm just going to put out a couple little uh, real fast tutorials for those. I will link them in the description box below. Um, and I will also add them to the playlist for the witch gnome. So if you want to make little accessories for it, you can, um, I may do more than just these two. I'm not sure yet. If I do, they'll be in that playlist and they'll be linked in the description box below. But I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, I would love to see how your gnome came out. My email is in the description box below and you are totally welcome to send me your gnome. We actually do something called Gnome of the Month on my channel. If you would like to participate and show off your gnome to the whole community, um, feel free to send me pictures of it and let me know what name you'd like me to credit you with and put Gnome of the Month in the subject line of your email. And I will know to add you to the Gnome of the Month compilation. Um, that is on the last Saturday of every month that I do the Gnome of the Month compilation. So go ahead and if you'd like to share with me, uh, go for it. And I would love to uh, read your comments. If you enjoyed this, just let me know. Uh, and I will see you guys on the next tutorial. Bye, guys. <laughs>